How is life treating you, viewers? Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment, doing a review of the GTA 4 series of games. I did a GTA comparison slash opinion video a while back. Maybe link in the upper right hand corner. And well, I mean, it was kind of decent. And I decided to do it for all the GTA 4 games because it was unique. And you had the original GTA 4, which I didn't like. I found Nico to be unlikable as a character and protagonist. The storyline overall was too dark and it was taking itself too seriously. Having played GTA San Andreas, which was lighthearted and fun and probably one of the best games, GTA 4 felt like the exact opposite. The other games sort of fell in between and balanced out the serious and the fun. There were plenty of what the fuck moments in all the games. GTA 4 had a few, but it seemed more like it was not intended to be cur be outrageous. One of the interesting aspects about all of the GTA 4 games was the lack of airplanes. Only helicopters. Everyone, including Johnny in The Lost and Damned, seemed to be able to easily fly a helicopter. Nico, it was understandable. He probably had military training. Luis from Ballad of Gay Tony, maybe he took lessons. Helicopters were actually a very important way for all characters to get important weapons like the RPG. Of the expansion missions, Lost and Damned was probably my favorite. If it had been a standalone game and Rockstar had put it out and used that as the basis for GTA 4, I would have probably enjoyed the game a whole lot more. And the expansion missions, including the Ballad of the Gay Tony, well, there was a carefree aspect to them, and Liberty City was open. And the main focus for both Lost and Damned and Ballad of Gay Tony were diamonds. And those were shown in the beginning of GTA 4, where some guy was baking a cake and putting the diamonds into that cake. Now, the other thing was Lost and Damned, um, well, it pushed boundaries. It had the first full frontal nudity, and I'm guessing Rockstar figured after the hot coffee incident, they said, you know what, we're just going to make these games for adults. They're the ones probably going to spend 60 bucks or whatever games cost at the time. And, you know, if some grandma ends up uh, giving her kid, her grandchild, a adult game, and it's labeled for adults, that's her fault. Then there was, I mean, the other thing, it, it just other stuff in... The Lost was just how the characters were kind of, they were in their life. They might have not been happy, but they were dealing with it. And the main protagonist, Johnny, was growing up, in a sense. And ultimately, he moved on. One of the interesting things about both the Ballad of Gay Tony and... The Lost and Damned was the antagonists. For The Lost and Damned, Ray Bocchino became the main bad guy. And for The Ballad of Gay Tony, Ray Bulgarin became the main bad guy. Rockstar obviously hates people named Ray for some reason. Kind of sad. Out of all three, 
uh, Lost and Damned was my favorite. And Johnny was trapped in a life he probably did not like. He was finally becoming self-aware and grown up enough to maybe move on. Unfortunately, he lost most of his friends in the process. If you played GTA V, you know the ultimate fate of Johnny. Lost and Dam tried to push limits, and well, it did, and it was fine. I mean, it was about alternative lifestyles, and being a biker, well, you can't get more alternative than that. The Ballad of Gay Tony was fun, it was interesting, it was more about um, drug culture than anything, and Luis was not, or has not, showed up in any of the other GTA games. We saw the fate of Johnny, and Luis, well, who knows. In Ballad, Rockstar did try to push the edge further by showing... Luis having sex with a woman he met in the club. What was annoying was the return of dancing. I hated the dance mission in GTA San Andreas, and it was even worse in the Ballad of Gay Tony. Leave dancing out of the games, please. Thankfully, there was no dancing aspect or mission or requirement in GTA 5. Overall, the add-on missions were more fun than GTA 4. And the great part was Liberty City became more complete and more open. No need to play certain missions in order to fully unlock the next island. Due to the open play of the entire city, the characters were able to find needed weapons quickly. And that was another wonderful part about the expansion packs, added weapons, automatic shotgun, military style submachine gun, and sticky bombs. Unfortunately, you could not buy them at ammunition. Now that the Battle of the Gay Tony is over, and I no longer have an Xbox 360, I have upgraded to a Series X, there's a whole bunch of games I had missed. With the Ave, Avner Media capture device, I can record gameplay on those games. For at least the next month, I will be putting up videos of Assassin's Creed Black Flag. That was the last Assassin's Creed I played on Xbox 360. I wanted to see how the um, Xbox One version carried over to Series X, so I started it, and it was phenomenal. Very immersive universe. And once I'm done with Black Flag, I will probably move on to a different game, then return to the Assassin's Creed franchise with Rogue. Oddly enough, I do have a copy of Valhalla, I bought it with the uh, gift card I got when I bought my Series X bundle. But I will not play that until I do all the other Assassin's Creeds I have missed. One of the things I'm hoping for is to reach 100, 100 subscribers or more. I put out four videos a week, and with the ability to now play all the back content I missed from Xbox One, I will have plenty to do. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, then the bell icon, to see all the new and exciting posts coming in the near future. Also, leave some comments. Right now I can reply to all the comments, and I do enjoy some decent comments, and I will reply. And thanks for stopping by.